This is the 970 Evo. You might have the pro version, you might have the plus version. In any case, the most common question is, should I be upgrading? So we're gonna talk about it. Welcome back to another video. My name is Nikos. Today we are looking at this 970 Evo. Is it still applicable in 2021? Is it worth it? And should you be upgrading? That is the most common question I've been getting. And uh, as such, I'm going to be answering it as I've tested many drives. I've stuck with the Western Digital. This is the SN850 Gen 4 drive. Great drive. I actually went through a process starting with the Sabrent, and then uh, that was the Rocket 4 Plus, and then the Samsung 980 Pro, and I ended up with the Western Digital. This is the rig I'm building over here, and um, I've been using it, and I've been testing a whole bunch of stuff. I can't complain. I, I love the Western Digital. Uh, that being said, the, the new drives are super fast, and the question begs, you know, should we be upgrading to these super fast drives? Is it time yet with everything that we are seeing in the market? Is it worth it? Um, some of you might have one of these older Gen 3 drives, and the question has been, should I upgrade to the 970 Evo, uh, either the Pro or Plus? And, um, you know, they're looking at it in terms of pricing because some of these drives are coming on sale for like 50 to 75 bucks off, which brings you right into competition of the Gen 3 970s. So uh, this is the question that um, people are asking, should I get the Gen 3 or jump up to the Gen 4. Uh, now, the Gen 4s are backwards compatible. I will be making a fuller video on uh, the Gen 3 versus Gen 4 drives in case you are thinking about, hey, I'm getting a new rig. What should I be doing? Should I invest the money right away or not? Um, and this video is more specific to the 970. The stats I'm going to show you are based on the 970, comparing them off to the data I have. Once again, I've tested these drives out. They are below in the links. You can check those out. They are not full technical reviews, not a technical reviewer. Uh, what I'm doing is looking at my workflow. I'm looking at what I do with massive amount of data transferring and the issues I found with the drives that made me need to return them and focus on the drives that work today. Not may work down the road when they do updates and all that. That's all I'm doing with these reviews. At the same time, there are new drives coming out. Fizen, uh, I was talking to somebody about Fizen, and uh, there's a, a seven, I think it was 7,500 7, megabytes per second, you know, which is faster than the uh, drives that are out right now. I mean, this goes up to 7,000. So, um, so there's stuff coming out. It's going to be uh, awesome next two years. I'm super excited. This isn't the first or the last drive I'm buying. So, I mean, I'm really excited to see what's coming down the road and what I'm going to be buying next and see how that's going to help me with my workflow. Now, workflow wise, when you're looking at these drives and you're thinking about, hey, do I want to get updated on these drives? Depending on what you're doing, the answer will be different. And when people go online and you watch these reviewers and they all talk about how amazing the N80 Pro is or the Western Digital or what have you, the question is, does your, your rig, is, is it bottlenecked because of the drive? And that's what the first thing you need to look at before you start investing money into this kind of uh, technology as, you, as it pertains to your, 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 your computers. And your computer really, like if there's another bottleneck, that's the one you have to be focused on. So I'm talking to all these gamers that are messaging me and they're like, hey, should we be upgrading? Is the load time affected you know, based on the stuff you're finding? And all the reviewers are actually correct on this. Like, it's negligible. You're not going to see that much of a difference. It's not really worth the money. At the same time, if you're looking at it in terms of a content creator or somebody who's using some of these uh, more elaborate, uh, more heavy workhorse kind of software, uh, they're different. Like Adobe Suite, some of the software is you know, really good with the Gen 4 drives. And some of them, you don't see a difference. So there's no point in uh, upgrading from this. And when it comes to Windows and other softwares, they're pretty much you know, the same. So negligible in that as well. Which means what? Uh, when we're looking at load times, uh, what is the reality of it? And is that waiting for you going to affect your whole mindset of where you're going with picking some of these drives? Now, again, we should be looking at all of this in terms of time, energy, and money. You're investing all that into finding the drive and using the drive. And then how does that pan out over time? When we're looking at the scenario, what is your return on investment? Are you 
investing into this or are you just spending money to get something better? Let's look at the stats and really go through the different aspects so we can put a little bit of a mindset based on business, based on investment, and best, based on what is the best decision for you right now. So starting off with a quick explanation of my data sets, I have folders here with 45 gigabytes and 90 gigabytes of a 4K shoot, random size uh, videos. There's the B-roll of 85 gigabytes, similar length B-roll. The random is a 46 gigabytes worth of thousands of files. And then I have the photo and video shoots with 4K and non-4K, 168 gigabytes and 122 gigabytes. Now, when you're doing any kind of data set work, I suggest you keep everything together, use the same kind of data sets and keep it somewhere where uh, you can move it really quickly uh, because this is a lot of data and this takes up a lot of time when you're moving things back and forth. And when you look at all the testing I've been doing, it is a lot. I've been doing this for all the different videos. I've been doing several different tests over and over repeating the averages and of course I, I am still doing a lot of testing on the load time so I do have some stuff I'm going to be showing you today however I am going to be looking at it in terms of another video for a gen 3 versus gen 4 video as I said at the beginning of this video now in this first graph the blue is the writing to the evo and the red is writing to the sn850 and what we are seeing is comparable speeds. Now, you're gonna look at these and say to yourself, well, they're not that far off. And uh, you know, when we're looking at something like 4K shoot with both photo and video, uh, again, you're moving stuff over. This is not a long time, not a long time whatsoever. When we flip the drives, again, we see a little bit more discrepancy because of where the drives are placed. So this is kind of a testing you're gonna have to do if you have a similar situation to me. And that's, this would go for, any drive you're using, if one is faster than the other, you really wanna pick the right slot for your drives. Again, not a big discrepancy, it is though. So this will compound over time. If you're looking at it in terms of, hey, how much data am I throwing at this? And say this 168 gigabytes turned into 300 gigabytes, I'm like literally losing a minute of work there. And if I'm transferring stuff back and forth throughout the day, yeah, it's negligible in a one day kind of thing. But when you're looking at it in terms of a long two, three, four weeks, now it starts to add up. If you have an employee, it starts to add up. Get where I'm going with this? Over time, this adds up. Now, looking at a better comparison of uh, two drives together, whether you have a Gen 3 and a Gen 4, and then of course the Gen 4 and Gen 4. In this case, I'm using my SNA 51 terabyte. And we look at the uh, blue right here is the writing to the two terabyte from the 970 EVO. And then the orange is the writing to the two terabyte from the SN850. We can see that there is substantial difference. Again, we're looking at it in terms of when do we find a big difference. And if you're working on it on a daily, this will affect you. If you're not, and you're doing this once a week, it's not gonna affect you, it's, it's negligible. When we look at it in terms of uh, writing to the 970 and then writing to the one terabyte from the two terabyte, the blue is writing to the Evo again. We're seeing in, in some cases the averages here, uh, the 45 gigabyte, it was faster on uh, the NVMe, uh, on the 970 EVO. However, we do see the difference here drastically change and the writing does take a toll. The, the writing is a lot slower on the 970 EVO and something like this where you're doubling your time, again, long term, this will affect you. On the one day you use this, it won't affect you. Will you have it in the back of your head now that you're seeing this stuff? And will you decide, hey, maybe I'm gonna go spend the money and move on it? That's probably gonna happen, I'm not gonna lie. But at the end of the day, when we're looking at this kind of a graph, we're saying to ourselves, you know, we, we, we gotta put it in perspective. And how does this fit the narrative? The writing of this 970 EVO and how often will you be writing is really critical to think about in terms of long-term effect of time adding up. Now, when I put everything together of the different drives from the uh, 980 Pro, the SN850, and the Sabrent, and then the 970, we can see on an average that writing to the two terabyte, it, you're not seeing that big discrepancy. It's it's rather amazing to see this. If we look at it from a perspective of it writing to the drives from the uh, two terabyte, and again, we're seeing a 
difference that is not that big. And you can see with the 980 Pro on something like a random, it's flying, the B-roll, it's flying. But then when you get to the aspect of, you know, the bigger folders with photos and video, uh, they're about equal again. And again, this is where we look at the different drives. I'll have all the videos below and you wanna make the decision based on what's best for you and your workflow. But when I'm looking at a chart like this, I'm saying to myself, hey, what is the best opportunity for me? And when I look at this, does it really matter? And do you really need to get a upgrade for both drives? Not necessarily. That 970 is keeping up with the rest of them. Now, I will be doing another video with the load times. And here, I just want to point out um, the Premiere Pro load times. You can see a substantial difference. And when we're using different features in the load times, what we're noticing here is like the Premiere Pro multicam sequence. Massive difference. And this is when the Samsung drive is the Windows drive. It is the software drive. We're looking at it and we're saying, all right, we're loading the files much quicker, of course. And this is a big difference. Now we're comparing the different softwares, the Premiere Pro, the Photoshop, Lightroom, and Lightroom CC. What I'm finding here is like some of these softwares are already optimized, where something like Premiere Pro and Lightroom are not that optimized. And this is where my thoughts go in terms of where do you want to be down the road? Optimization hasn't fully happened. I was just talking to somebody about the M1 and their thought process right now is really, really um, on that idea of, hey, it keeps coming. I'm going to go buy it. They bought it and they're like, I'll deal with the problems, but they can't get their work done. And they could have waited until, hey, November or something. They didn't need a new computer. Some people will need a new computer. But the software is being upgraded. And now, you know, they're releasing the Premiere Pro 4 M1. And, you know, you got to think about it. It's going to be optimized for it. They're doing the same thing with all these Gen 4 drives and the new video cards and all the different things that are occurring in technology. So it's something to really think about here. So I'll add that. I should put everything into perspective. Before we get into final recommendations, please hit that like button as it helps the algorithm and do consider subscribing. Now, final recommendations, scenarios, and what would you be thinking about as a good decision making thought process. When you're looking at that data, when you're looking at everything in the grand scheme of things, you're looking at workflow, time, energy, and money, how you're investing it, and what's your return. If I'm looking at it in terms of what I did, well, because of my scenario, I kind of got pushed into it. I was always thinking I was just going to do these Gen 3 drives until I want to really research everything and then jump up to the, the next level. However, I ended up going with the Western Digital SN850 after trying a whole bunch of drives and I'm so happy I did. I do have three of these drives now and I'm using the one and two terabyte most, one with the windows and the two with the loading of my data and then storing it there. It loads up to the cloud, it backs up to the Synology, I work and then I can just unsync it and then I go on to the next project. I'm consistently moving to a third drive. I can't be happier right now. Super fast, everything's efficient, can't complain uh, until Asus fixes my issue as well. But other than that, we're all good. Would I still be happy with a combo of the uh, Samsung 970 Evil and the one or two terabyte Gen 4? Yes, we saw the numbers, they are good to go. I would still be happy with that. And if you're looking at it in terms of, hey, I have a budget and then I'll upgrade as I go, that is a great solution and look for the deals, don't rush into it. If you're thinking about upgrading from something like this to the 970 Evo, yes, totally worth it. You've seen the data, totally worth it. Things aren't optimized fully yet for the Gen 4 drives. Don't rush it, wait for the new drives to come out, see what's the best, keep looking at the reviews, they're constantly changing. Even the videos I made, there is no new firmware. I mean, there's always something going on. You need to keep up with everything based on your workflow and what everybody else is doing, compare and make the best decision for you. Now, one thing that I really wanna mention on this and I want everybody to be uh, thinking about, where is the ultimate benefit with having all Gen 4 drives? Well, we're looking at it in terms of, yes, that data transfer. Yes, that is a, making everything more efficient, even though it is negligible on, you know, once or twice a week in the long run, doing this every day, definitely worth it for somebody like me. But again, I'm building a rig. And with that rig, well, I have a 
360 Ti in there. I have 120 gigabytes of RAM. And then of course I have a 5900X with a motherboard that's an X570 that can handle Gen 4 drives. And when you look at the speeds of the 970 Evil and you say to yourself, am I bottlenecking myself? Now, based on the speeds we saw there, not really. However, where do I find the most amount of benefit that I noticed the uh, use of having both drives and the Windows drive specifically being the Gen 4 drive with the Western Digital that I'm using, well, it, it comes down to multitasking. That system allows me to multitask. I can literally work on a project while I'm loading another project. I can literally render that project. It's rendering over here. I can be working on another project and then loading stuff into Photoshop Lightroom. And while I'm finishing another project, you know, if it's small and I can do two at once or I'm working between a set of four different ones, I can literally have the system rendering in Premiere Pro and encoder and then working in Photoshop and Lightroom. Like, let's think about this. Do I find a little bit of a slowdown with the use of the uh, 970 Evil. Yes, I am. I'm seeing that slow down with it. That being said, okay, how often are you going to be doing something like that? If you're somebody like me who is doing that for like three, four hours, you're just going at it and you need that speed and it makes it efficient. Yes. The thought process here becomes, well, is everybody going to be in that scenario? And if you're not, then where are you going to find that multitasking in your software? Will that be worthwhile to you? For me, it's like a million bucks. I, totally worth it. You might be asking yourself, what should you be doing with these drives if you're upgrading? Well, I have external devices that I connect these into and we're off to the races. So I use those all the time when I'm transferring data back and forth with other people or on my rig to my laptop if I don't want to wait for the Google to do its thing with the syncing. At the same time, I do have a Dell XPS 9570 that needs one of these drives. So I loaded it in there. If you were telling me, hey, should I be purchasing a Gen 4 drive for a machine like that, well, it doesn't need the Gen 4. It only needs something like this. It doesn't go much faster than that. It's not Gen 4 capable. However, if I, if I was in debate of buying one of these two and this was on sale within 40 to 50 bucks of this, hands down, I would definitely go and purchase one of these Western Digitals or a 980 Pro. I throw it in there. Why? Because eventually I'm going to upgrade that laptop. And I know when I get my new laptop, it's going to be the same scenario, a crappy drive in there. I'll throw that in there. We're good to go. And I know I'm going to be upgrading that laptop in the next, you know, six to eight months. Black Friday is coming. I'm probably going to do that. This is my thinking. This is the idea of where is the return on investment? And right now that is the return on investment. My name is Nikos. Hit a like, hit a subscribe if you like what you see, because I'll be making more content. Of course, leave a comment below, leave your story and leave your questions. If you have questions and you want me to make another video with more uh, data-driven research or you just want my opinions on stuff, uh, let me know and I will definitely oblige and make something good. Don't forget, check out these two videos. Um, they'll do you good.